Hello Pre-Calc, we are done learning new stuff for Chapter 2 from the Calc book. Um, so today is just a review day. You do have a test coming up soon. Um, the test will be in Canvas um, and you can take it multiple times, but um, definitely have your notes, homework, anything out that you feel might be handy to help you. Um, but let's go through the topics that you need to kind of be aware of. All right, limits. Obviously, this whole chapter dealt with limits. So, different types. All right, some limits. All right, you just plug in X. Right? It doesn't make anything undefined. You can just plug it in and figure out what it's approaching. All right, if it's a limit as X approaches like plus or, plus or minus infinity, you're going to want to look at the end behaviors, end behaviors slash horizontal asymptotes. All right. So if it's approaching x, if it's approaching positive infinity, negative infinity, that's where you're going to have to look at the end behaviors slash horizontal asymptotes. All right. Um, so remember your end behavior models and or horizontal asymptotes. All right, if it, X is approaching a vertical asymptote, all right, if it's approaching a vertical asymptote, you're gonna wanna check the limit from both sides, all right, to make sure that the left-hand limit equals the right-hand limit. To make sure the left-handed limit equals the right-handed limit, all right. If they do equal each other, then you know what your limit is. Otherwise, if they don't equal each other, like one's going to positive infinity, one's going to negative infinity, it's going to be does not exist. Okay. When you have a limit that is approaching a vertical asymptote, all right, from either the left or the right, it's always going to be positive or negative infinity it will be positive infinity or negative infinity. So if you recall, that's when we plugged in a number that was close to the vertical asymptote, and then we figured out if we got a positive number or a negative number, and that determined whether it was positive or negative infinity. All right, um, as X approaches an X value of a whole, you're going to want to find the y value of the whole because that would that's what it will be approaching is the y value of the whole all right how do you know it's a whole remember that if you get 0 over 0 when you plug it in all right when you plug that x value in if you get 0 over 0 it means it's a whole it means it's a whole. And remember, we did have some problems where synthetic division was a possibility. So, so, so synthetic division is possible. Okay, we did do a little bit with that. Um, the other things that we talked about, remember the limit as x approaches either plus or minus infinity, whichever one it happens to be, of sine of x over x, that's going to equal zero. And the other one that we dealt a lot with was limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x. That equals 1. All right. You could also graph those if you weren't, if you don't remember. All right. We also talked about something called the sandwich theorem. All right. The sandwich theorem basically says that if you have some function f of x, that's between two other functions. So between h of x and g of x. And the limit as x approaches c of h of x, so as, as x approaches some specific value of h of x, if that limit is also equal to the limit as x approaches c of g of x, right, and they both equal L, whatever that happens to be. So the limit of both of these ends up equaling L, then therefore, those three dots means therefore, the limit as x approaches c of f of x has to also be l. All right, so if f of x is in between these two functions and the limit as x approaches some value of c for both of these is the same thing, then the limit as x approaches c of this function f of x has to also be the same thing. In this case, we called it l. 
All right, so that's sandwich theorem. We talked about the average speed slash the slope of a secant line. All right, this one does not involve a limit. It's just f of t plus h minus f of t all over h. Remember t was the original time and h is the elapsed time. So how much time has elapsed? Elapsed time. Um, the other possibility is it could just be f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, depending on what we're talking about. Okay, if we're talking about slope, it's not going to involve time. So it might be x instead of t. Um, and then instantaneous speed We've done that a couple times. We just did that in our last notes. Instantaneous speed slash the slope of a tangent line. Okay, remember, a secant line intersects the curve in two locations. Tangent only intersects it in one. Uh, this one, you do have to do the limit as h approaches zero of f of t plus h minus f of t all over h. Or if we're talking about a tangent line, there is no time, it would be the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. All right, so those are important to know. Um, let's see, we talked about something called continuity. So for continuity, be able to find the points of continuity slash discontinuity. So being able to figure out where something is continuous versus discontinuous, discontinuity. All right, remember you had different types, so make sure you're familiar with the types of discontinuity. So we had the jump ones, we had the removable ones. So jump is like piecewise where one piece is down here and the other piece is way up there, jumps. Um, you had removable which is a whole, and then you have infinite, which is like a vertical asymptote. Um, be able to do like the extended function, All right? So we talked about those on the days that we talked about continuous or continuity. And then we also did with continuity, we had to find either A or K, whatever you want to call it, um, so that the function is continuous. And we just did something like that in our last notes. So function is continuous. I didn't spell that right. O-U-S. There we go. Um, and then we talked about something called the intermediate value theorem. The intermediate value theorem. All right, remember in order to use something like that, the function must be continuous. Function must be continuous. All right. And then if f of c is between, b slash w is between, f of a and f of b, then c must be between a and b. So if you know that the y value at C is somewhere between the y value at A and B, then C itself has to be between A and B. All right, and then let's see, what else do we do? Um, be able to find the equation of tangent lines and normal lines. tangent lines and normal lines. Um, and then there was the last one that I'm going to do is does the curve have a tangent at the given point? So we did ones like these um, when we talked about tangent lines. Um, does the curve have a tangent at the given point? 
So in order for that to happen, you have to have a couple things. First of all, it must be continuous at that point. So it must be continuous. And then the other thing that must happen is the slope from the left. So when you're approaching it from the left side, it must equal the slope from the right. All right, and we talked about that in that video where we talked about this. Um, and I gave examples of where, you know, the slope might not be the same as you go from the left to the right. So, um, yeah, I think that pretty much summarizes everything. You do have a review worksheet. That'll be a really good study guide, and you want to make sure you're familiar and comfortable with all of those problems. And if you are, then you should be totally fine for the test. All right. Thanks for listening.